I first met Miles, uh, I, uh, when I first moved to New York in uh, uh, 72, 73, when I moved down there full time from upstate, um, I was living at Gil Evans' house because uh, I was working with Gil and I didn't have a place to stay so Gil had extra room in his house and his apartment and I, I was staying there. And that's when I met Miles uh, during that period. And uh, <clears throat> I think the fact that, you know, Gil dug me, gave, uh, was, was worked in my favor to, you know, have Miles predisposed to, you know, kind of to be nice to me, you know, and give me a shot. And so that's the period of time that I met him. Uh, and uh, I mean, it was great that I got to meet, you know, first got to meet Gil and then I got to meet Miles after that. So that was many, me very meaningful, you know. Many uh, musicians um, who, who have had the opportunity to play with Miles um, have often refuted the fact, uh, have often refuted his tough, arrogant exterior doesn't really come out so much when he's when he's with his bandmates. What has been your experience as far as the way Miles treats those around him um, in terms of who he plays with? Well, you know, I I never, you know, directly saw him be, uh, you know, be nasty to anybody. I mean, I, I, I never saw it. I mean, I know people tell me that he could be a real, you know, real hard on people. Um, I, I, I never saw it personally, but <clears throat> I'm, sh I'm sure it's true, you know, because, you know, that there's, a, there's enough of those stories that, you know, it's most likely true that he was, could be a little nasty to some people. And, uh, but I, I think that, I, I don't know, uh, it's really hard to, you know, uh, break, you know, to, to simplify somebody's personality or whatever they're, who they are into simple little categories, you know. I mean, I, I think Miles is a, you know, very complex person and uh, he had a lot of stuff going on in his life and, you know, his history is whatever, that's other psychology, you know, I don't know. That's kind of, I always figured it was none of my business, you know. Uh, it was the music that was meaningful to me and the, and the fact that he was always very kind to me was, you know, <laughs> I definitely appreciated that. You know, that he didn't, what, whatever, <clears throat> whatever negative behavior he might have exhibited, he, he, didn't, he didn't direct it at me. So, you know, I felt like I was okay, you know. I mean, I... And, and it's really remarkable that by the time you got the chance to play with him, this was, I mean, this was the fourth or fifth different generation that he uh, had. Yeah, he changed, music, he changed music so many times. You know, profoundly changed music so many times that, uh, I mean, when you think about it, it's really astounding, you know, what he did. Uh, he always had that sound. I mean, that sound Tell and that, sound. that cry, it was just, you know, there's just this big, fat sound. He played that old, you know, especially at, when he was playing those old the Martin trumpets, you know, that, some of it was that, but, you know, uh, uh, it ain't the horn, you know. Somebody told me a funny story about Yasha Heifetz. Yasha Heifetz came off stage once and somebody came up to him and said, uh, Mr. Heifetz, your, your violin sounded amazing. And he held it up to his ear and he said, I don't hear anything. So, you know. Very nice. Miles had a... <laughs> if there's 
deep soul. Is there know? a particular snapshot story that you could that stands out in your head that will remain with you in terms of being around Miles? Is there anything in particular that you could? <clears throat> well, I was uh, I was at Gill's house and. Uh, Uh, we, uh, I was working w with, with Gil, Gil Evans' band. Uh, we played Monday nights at the Village Vanguard, and uh, we were listening to, uh, you know, Gil would always tape the, the shows. And we were listening to playbacks of, you know, one of the shows, and, and Miles came over, and he was sitting there listening, and I'm like, oh, God. I'm like really nervous, you know, because I knew I had a solo coming up on the tape and I'm like shit you know it's miles is sitting here listening to me <clears throat> and I'm listening to the solo and I'm like at one point I uh, I did something you know on on the tape at the performance and uh, and I just kind of involuntarily said ah god I wish I hadn't done that and Miles just looked at me and he said you should have done it twice and I thought you know Okay, you know, he understood how to manipulate space, you know, he understood that music was how to use music silence, spaces. yeah, it's, it's sound and silence, it's interrupting a silence, you know, it's a very, you know, that's I think what to me was his great lesson for me was just, you know, you got to use the space. You don't fill it unless it means something, you know. There's a theater director named Peter Brook who wrote a book called The Empty Space. And that's what he talked about, you know, like painters. You know, there's textures and, you know, where, where you, where you have an action, where you have a, an impression, and where you don't. You know, that you manipulate space. The musicians manipulate space in time. You know, that's, that's what we do. And uh, Miles was a master of that, you know. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you so much for taking the sure. time to talk with me. Great show. Thank you. Fantastic show.